Hi, this is Coach Charlie, and today we're going to talk about the left mid position and the right mid position in terms of the 4 2 3 1 formation and what these attacking midfielders are going to do in terms of offensively and defensively, and talk a little bit about the player attributes that we expect from this particular type of player. Um, first and foremost, this player must be technically sound with their passing, their dribbling, first touch and be able to play the ball with both feet. Now, here's what's a little bit different that not everyone may be accustomed to. I want the left midfielder to be right-footed because I want them to be able at a moment's notice to cut in towards goal to score. Typically, what happens if we put a left-footed person on the left mid, it becomes harder to cut in and score. Now, it's easier to get down to the goal line and be able to do a cross out in away from goal into this open space. However, oftentimes we're going to cut in before that. Um, even if we're making diagonal runs, I like this person uh, to be a right-footed player on our left mid position. Must be fast with a level of endurance to be able to last throughout long stretches of the game. Have an attacking mindset and willing to take players on in the final third. So as we get up in the here in this third here, get, must be comfortable taking on a player because as we get into that third, we don't have a lot of time, so we've got to make sure that we're comfortable taking on players if the numbers make sense. The responsibilities on offense, we're going to stay pinched in closer. And what I mean by pinched in, we're going to stay closer to the middle of the field. So where it says closer to the middle and get into attack when the ball moves forward. So we really want to stay right in this area. We don't want to get too far out, even though I show in the thing um, where we are going to get outside most of the times we're going to stay in this pinched in closer to the middle so that way as our left back makes an overlapping run they have a lane to be able to run upon as well we're going to play the ball to the outside of the overlapping left back as we mentioned here so as the left back is running forward we can play the ball outside into space for them to continue their run we're following up as a drop as a cut in depends on what the other team responds to and how we react to that with the line uh, or with the left back. Um, play gives, uh, the plays give and go with both the center mid and forward, a lot of give and goes here. Um, could sometimes do give and goes here, but usually that's an overlapping run instead. Uh, play the ball through balls between the defenders for the central mid and forward to run upon. So as lines of defenders here, lots of through balls, sometimes balls over the top, as long as it didn't play into the goal, uh, those are opportunities as well for the left mid. And then cut in on the right foot and take shots at goal. That's what I was talking about earlier. Really want this person to be a right-footed person, if possible, to be able to cut in on goal. Defensively, they need to pressure the outside defensive back. So the other team's outside defensive back, we want to apply pressure, whether it's a goal kick or whether it's up <clears throat> as we move down the field. This is the position to apply that. We don't want... Uh, this position applied because as they pull outward, it leaves a gap in the middle. So the preference here is the left mid to cover that position. We want to force the ball to the sidelines by keeping the ball to our left as we're backpedaling, as we're moving backward uh, to make sure that ball stays outside. We're going to cover defensively for our left back when they make overlapping runs. So as the back runs forward, we've got to cover that position to be in a spot where drops can occur, where support can occur, where switches can occur. So as the left back makes the run up into this space, the left midfielder is going to be trailing behind, but staying in a space where there is distance um, and space to be able to create opportunities for us. Uh, the coverage area that the left mid is going to go, uh, probably not going to be as wide as what it shows here, but has the ability to do that if needed. If the left mid goes wide, then the left back will cut inside of them if we do an overlapping run that way. I like to do that sometimes to confuse uh, opposing teams as well. But we are going to go as deep as the goal line on the opposing sideline. We'll drop slightly deeper than this as well, but the point in showing this is I don't want the left mid to be consistently back here at our goal line, as that should be the responsibility of our left backs. We'll play inside the 18, but not that often um, based upon how we play there too. The right mid is just the opposite. On the opposite side of the field, I'm going to be reacting and interacting a lot with the right back, as well as the right holding mid, center mid, and forward. The um, technically sound with the passing as well. They need to be left-footed. That's the preference. If we can get a left-footed person here that can pull forward and cut in, that's ideal in what we're trying to do. Must be fast with endurance, have an attacking mindset, and again, willing to take on people here. We, we can't be passive once we get in this part of the field. We must be willing and comfortable with our own foot skills to be able to take on defending players 
and try to get our shot off or get an open pass to an open teammate. Offensively, the responsibilities, we want to stay in, pinch closer to this center line with where the center mid and the forwards are. So we're going to stay in. That gives room for the outside lane with the right back. We're going to play the ball outside to the overlapping right back as they run up through the field. And we're going to play a lot of give and go with our center mids and forwards. We're also looking for through balls through the defense for our forward and for our center mid, whether it's straight runs or diagonal runs whether they um, overlap one another and switch spots, we are looking for those through balls. We wanna be able to cut in with our left foot as we push up the field, if the opportunity presents itself to be able to cut in. Uh, defensively, this person is gonna cover the left back for the opposing team. So they're gonna pressure that outside um, back. Uh, when they have the ball, we're gonna to try to push them to the outside to keep that ball on the width versus letting it get into our center field. Um, and then we're going to cover defensively for our right back as they make the overlapping run. So just like we did on the other side, if the right back runs into this space, we need to be behind trailing for support for a drop, for a switch, possibly even a shot on goal based upon where we are in the position of the field. So with that, that covers both the right and left mid. You'll see here with what the right mid is, it's covering just the exact opposite side of the field, must be enduring. Um, athlete to be able to get up and down the field as well. But the two midfielders on the outside, both the left and right mid, are very critical in terms of how we run the 4 2 3 1 possession. Very much attacking mindset, um, very good in terms of communication and, and their vision of the field as well. So look forward to seeing us instill this role, grow the skill set required to run this role. And um, that's it for the 4 2 3 1.